I will be spending the next few days in Romania. Transylvania throughout the world known for the bloodthirsty Dracula. While it is hard to avoid the typical lore, you'll also find lush green forest, enchanting villages, cobbled walkways, fabled castles, and even in some places, horses are still the main source of transportation. It makes you take a step back into the medieval past of Europe. I would recommend getting a rental car at the airport. Arriving at Bucharest, we headed to our first destination, the little city of Sibiu. Now, if you happen to go in summer, check to see if the Transvagarasan road is open. It is known as the best road in the whole world. There are breathtaking views from every angle. Also, you can visit the real rooms of Dracula's castle, the waterfall, or breathe in the Lake Balea. So let's go back to Sibiu. German settlements in the 12th century founded Sibiu. The city became one of the main cultural hubs of Transylvania. Its craft guilds were the heart of urban life. The pole, this pole, represents the final products of students that were trying to join the guild in metal crafting. There's so many things to do, such as roll down Strada Nicola Balescu, covered with beautiful pastel intricate buildings, visit the Orthodox Cathedral, and visit the Council Towers before heading down to Piatamina. Then make sure to visit the Lutheran Cathedral, the Pharmacy Museum, and the Bridge of Lies. So one thing I really love about Sibiu are the houses that always seem to like be watching you because of the eyes, but they also remind me from that movie Haunted House with the like house eight, the three kids, you know? With that ends our first day in Sibiu and we spend a night in Sibiu too. A two hour long drive and only 30 lei for adults. It is totally worth it because. Next stop, out of a medieval fairy tale, we find the Corvin Castle. The area was given to John Hyundai by Charles I of Hungary. It is a 15th century castle that is only accessible by a long drawbridge. Legend goes that Vlad the Impaler, otherwise known as Dracula, was once held in these dungeons for seven years, making him go mad. This is probably not true though. A story with a bit more backing to it is that of three Turkish prisoners. They were promised by the king that if they dug a well that would strike water, they would be free. They dug for 15 years and reached 30 meters down. However, in that time, the king died and the queen decided not to follow through with her husband's promise. Moreover, decided to kill the prisoners. Before they died, they carved into a piece of stone a message for the queen. You will have water, but will have no soul. The inscription can now be found in the bustress of the chapel. The castle is honestly breathtaking. I feel like I am in one of the stories from like every childhood princess. Or queen, I'm a fucking queen, I'm not a princess. But the view from all of these little holes, let me show you. Second destination is in the Fortified Church in Garnik. Fortified churches are one of the most beautiful wonders that Transylvanian Saxons have left behind. They are characterized by a specific settlement pattern that has been preserved since the late Middle Ages. Kalnik Fortified Church not only survived the Ottoman sieges, but also the passing of time since 1269. 
Originally, it was a private residence of the nobleman Shield de Kelly. Later, it became public property. Don't hesitate to go up to the gate tower, also known as the bell tower. Be warned that the steps get very steep. Also, visit the wine cellar and the Museum of Medieval Romanian Life. It is a great starting point to understand the importance of the Saxon heritage in the land beyond the forest. I can hear the cows. I can see the whole town. And it's empty and there's no one here. And it's just like, if I had to buy a plane ticket to come all the way here, actually that's a lot of money. But just make, just come here. So our third destination before getting to Durva is in Alba Iulia. Um, a small town, but we're looking at the fortifications. So you see the first wall, the second wall, and we're gonna go see the other wall. In case there's an invasion. And it kind of reminds me of Attack on Titan. You've got the three walls trying to stop all the titans, and I'm getting ahead of myself. The magnificently preserved citadel also happens to be the largest in Romania. Alba Iulia was known by the Dacians as Apulum, serving as both the capital of Upper Dacia and later the largest center of the Dacian province of the Roman Empire. From 1542 to 1690, Alba Iulia was also the capital of Transylvania. The entrance will set you back a whole 5 euros if you're an adult and 2.5 if you're a student. The history of digging this mine goes back to the 2nd century after the fall of the Roman Empire. Then, in World War II, it served as a bomb shelter. Later, the cool underground caverns were used to store... Cheese? Yeah, cheese. And eventually, they turned it into a 400 feet down, submerged wonderland. So, currently in the underground amusement park, and they've got little, they have ping pong tables, they have like a little opera house. Moreover, I'm gonna go be like these people. I am rolling in the water underground. That sounds cool, right? I feel like it sounds cool. I am Now we're gonna spend one day and two nights in Shishwada a small city in Transylvania dating back to the 1100s, when a Hungarian king was pushing Saxons to move there to defend his borders. So craftsmen and artisans built today what is a fairy-like town. It is impossible not to fall in love with the brightly colored houses and colored walkways. There are so many historical relics that date back to the Middle Ages, such as the Bootmaker's Tower, the Clock Tower, the Church of the Dominican Monastery. So in the place we're staying, it turns out, it's a UNESCO site, Casa Augustus. I will look up the story later because I don't know why it is, but it's pretty cool. Fun fact, this is also where the infamous Vlad the Impaler was born in the 15th century. Vlad the Impaler was a prince of Wallachia, whose notoriously brutal methods made him the inspiration for Dracula. And for a small fee, you can even go look at his childhood bedroom or not be drawn into the tourist trap and just take a look at the bright yellow house from the outside. Now we're gonna head to Viskli. This much overlooked village is a perfect insight of what traditional Saxon village looks like. If you go, make sure to visit the fortified church of Alba Exclesia, first mentioned in the 12th century. They have fortifications with towers that were added around 1500. Although the church was Roman Catholic, it became Lutheran following the Reformation. I'm on the hunt for fresh bread. This place is so warm. The bread is still warm. They showed us the process. They burn it completely. And then they chop off the burn. Oh my god. My favorite part is here. <laughs> they don't sell the small loaf. This is just so back to Viskri. The great majority of Saxons left after 1989 revolution, and now there's a dominant Roma population. The houses, log fountains, chickens are all still a solid testament of how things work. The last stop of today is Brasov, which is a little bit more city. It also has its kind of cool, oldish vibe. Um, not as secluded though. And we're gonna stay here for about two hours and explore. The Teutonic Knights settled in Brasov in 1211 on an ancient Dacian site. Make sure to visit Piata Stafoli, 
During the Middle Ages, it used to be a place for public trials and executions. Then, later, it was turned into a parking lot during the communist era. Now, it is a great place to people watch and grab a bite to eat. I'm still having the bread from Viscudi. After breakfast, we head out to what is arguably the most famous castle in Romania, Bran Castle. Bran Castle, commonly known as also Dracula's castle, even though it has nothing to do with Dracula. But it was, okay, so about in the year 1212, the Teutonic Order kind of had like a little castle here, but then the Mongols came 30 years later and destroyed it. Fast forward a couple years and in 1377, Louis I of Hungary gives the grand privilege to the Saxons to come into the area and build their citadel. <laughs> Then it became a defense against the Ottoman Empire and later a customs post. Eventually Hungary loses Transylvania and therefore the Bran Castle. And the castle is gifted to Queen Marie, granddaughter of Queen Victoria, as a way to show their support of the union of Transylvania and Romania. The castle becomes a hospital during World War II under Princess Iliana. A little over an hour away, we find Belez Castle, built under King Carol I and Elizabeth as a summer retreat. It soon became the origin of a national dynasty. Even the floors are a monument to its beauty, so you have to wear slippers to go in. It is the first castle in all of Europe to have central heating and electricity. Also, visit Belisor Castle, only a few steps away from Belez. King Carol I and Queen Elizabeth had only one child that died at the age of three. So the residence was built for the future king and queen, Ferdinand and Maria. So for the last day, you can either spend it in Bucharest, which is not Transylvania, but it is the capital of Romania, or get to know Christendom, which is the little town where we stayed near the Brown Castle. It has its own fortified church and lore to it. I recommend spending the last day in a farm stay, learn how to hurdle some sheep, milk some cows, work the fields, or simply take in the scenery. If you have a chance, please go to Romania. I mean, it has everything from enchanted castles to underground amusement parks for a very cheap price. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you don't, just move on to your next video.